All right, welcome back. Um, make sure you watch the previous videos again, because otherwise this is not going to make a lot of sense because it's kind of the cont continuation of this introduction series of N8N. Okay, so in the previous video, we kind of created this, our initial trigger node, which was a chat, and we also created this customer um, data store, which is an N8N training node. All right, so let's go ahead and continue in this um, workflow that we're building here. So let's go ahead and double click on our database here, this node. And as I said before, I'm going to click on test step, and this is going to output all this data that's coming in. So now let's get out of this. So now let's go ahead and actually start to manipulate the data that's coming in from this node and add connecting nodes to this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus button because I want to add a node that's going to be connected to this node, right? So you're going to click on the plus button. So now let's say I want to transform the data that's coming in from this node. And therefore I can either search for that particular node that I'm looking for or come in here and click on data transformation. And you can see all of the different nodes that are available for me uh, to be able to do something with that data that's coming in from here. So let's go ahead and add this edit fields or the set that you did there, uh, that ended in first. So I'm going to click on this. And as you can see, now if I back out, it is connected to my previous node automatically. Okay, so let's go ahead and double click this. One of the things we can do, and I always suggest doing it is adding a name to each node. And this gives you really a good organization and gives you a good understanding when you're especially when you're building really complex workflows. Uh, naming your node is very, very useful because it, it will uh, give you a good understanding of what node is doing what, right? So I'm going to go ahead and for this one, I'm just going to say transform data. And if I just click on that and click on rename, it's going to change the name of this node to transform data. Now, if I back out, as you can see right here in the bottom, this is what it's going to show. And same thing, if I want to change the uh, name for this, all I have to do is click on this, double click on it, double click on this again, and I'm just going to say test data. Click on rename, back out, and as you can see now, my um, node has really nice and clean name here. So let's go ahead and as you can see right now, there's five items that are coming in as an output from this to this node. So let's go ahead and double click on this and try to do something with this data that's coming in. As you can see on the left hand side, I have my input and this is going to be coming in on that previous video. I can always click on this and this will take me to that next um, or the previous node. I can always go to my other node that's connected to this by clicking on the right hand console. Okay, so right now I have this as JSON view. Um, I want to go ahead and try to uh, utilize my schema view to be able to do something with this data that's coming in and manipulate it. One more quick thing in the JSON view right here, as you can see on the input, you have this little drop down, and this is going to show you all of the nodes that are connected to this node, and therefore you can have access to them uh, from your JSON view here if you want to, let's say, grab something or grab data from uh, your previous node here. So that's kind of a neat little uh, drop down they have. But let's go back to our schema view here. All right, so this is all of the input, like I said, that's coming in from our previous node. You can see um, I have the name of my node and then all of the different items that are inside that node. And this is the previous node, again, that's shown to me, just like on the JSON view, you can toggle between uh, the nodes here. On the schema view, this will kind of list down all of the nodes on the left-hand side. And I can always minimize or maximize this by clicking on the little arrow there. Okay, so now let's say I want to be able to do something with uh, this particular data that's coming in. There's several modes that this particular node has. One mode is the manual mapping and another the JSON. So if you want to interact with JSON view, if you're familiar with code, then you can utilize the JSON view. But most people uh, will be using the manual mapping here. So this says field to set. So as you can see right here, it says drag input fields here or add fields. So one of the great things about N8N is that you can actually drag different items inside of nodes and be able to interact with that data, manipulate that data, change that data, or add something to it. So let's go ahead and let's say I want to drag and filter this data or transform the data that's coming in just by the name and the email. So I'm going to go ahead and click on um, grab the name and just bring it down here. As soon as I do that, as you can see, when I uh, dropped it here, this shows me 
these curly brackets and then the dollar sign json.name. So this is what NNN refers to as expression. So anything that's inside these curly brackets or JavaScript code, right? So you can always click inside it. And if you, um, if you are familiar with code, you can always do different things with it by let's say if I want to add additional piece of code or additional piece of function, uh, I can just click on, uh, uh, just add dot. And then all of these different suggested functions are going to open up for me where then I can manipulate this via code, but I'm going to not going to do that for now. So let's just go ahead and remove that dot from here. And I can always expand this. So if you have more data that you're putting in, you can click on this little button right here, and this will do an expand view where then you can now interact with it in a maximize and with more space. And again, this is going to be very, very useful when you're building complex uh, nodes and you're trying to manipulate data, or if you're adding uh, prompts, then this or this view becomes really, really useful. And as you can see on the left hand side, so again, these are all the data that's coming in. This is my JSON, so I can always drag different stuff here and this will show me um, the data in the JSON view. And then on the right hand side, it will show me the result of what that looks like. And you can always, you know, manipulate it from here. But I'm going to go ahead and for now, get rid of this. And let's go back to our uh, node view here. So I can name this particular data that's coming in, right? So let's go ahead and say, full name. Oops. And uh, I can specify the type of data this is, right? So if it's a string, a number, a Boolean, an array, or an object, obviously, this is going to be a, a string. So I'm going to leave it as string. And in the bottom right here, you can see that it shows the result of what this data looks like. And obviously, this is going to be Jay Gatsby, because that's what the name of this uh, test data that's coming in from this side, right? Okay, and I can always add more stuff. So let's say I want to add the email here. Same thing. All I have to do is just grab the email, drop it here, specify the type as I'll leave it as it is. And I can change the name to email. Okay, and let's go ahead and grab the country as well. So I'm gonna grab the country. Same thing. I'll just rename it to country. You can always rename, rename this to whatever you want. And let's go ahead and also uh, maybe add this created. So that way you can see um, the actually, you know what, let's grab the ID. So that way you can see that this is a number. So this time ID. And I'm going to change this to number. Okay, and on the bottom, like I said, you can see the result here. Okay, cool. So options, again, I don't have to worry about options for now, because it's going to be a very, very simple transformation. So now, as you can see, on the left hand side, we have these uh, five pieces, one, two, three, four, five, six, six pieces of information that's coming in um, uh, for for a particular item. And we're transforming, we're only grabbing four pieces of information. So we're almost like filtering this data, right? Because we're only grabbing the name, the email, the country and the ID. So now if I click on test step here, what this is going to do is this is going to output all of this data based on whatever criteria that we identified here. And here we basically said, Hey, we want all of these data, meaning all the five items that are coming in from our previous input or our previous note, we want to output this. And I only want to see the full name, email, country and ID. And as you can see, the column names now instead of the name that was before and like, okay, on table here. So here, this is a good view. Here, the ID name, email notes, country created all of this was coming in. And we manipulated this data using our set node. And the output is now only four columns, which we renamed it also to full name, email, country and ID. So now we got all of this data that's coming in, we filtered it, or we grabbed only the data that we wanted to get, right. So this is going to be the output now from this node. And if I get out of this, as you can see, right now, this came in, and these green tick marks, it just means that the execution was successful. So if there was any kind of error, you will see it in red here. Okay, so now there's now five items just came from here and five items coming out from here. However, this time the output of this is that instead of this five, six columns that was in the input, we'll get the mistake here and get rid of this, 
instead of uh, the six column, one, two, three, four, five, six, the six columns that it was, we basically um, manipulated the data and we now only have four columns. So we don't, we said that, you know what, we don't need the created time and the notes field. We just want to be able to grab these fields and therefore we have now uh, grabbed and change the data that was coming in from the previous item. Okay, so let's go ahead and add and do something else with this, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on plus button here. And now let's say I only want to, I want to filter this, right? I only wanna filter this for the certain criteria that I want to get, right? So same thing, you can click on data transformation or you can just search here for filter and all of the nodes that are related to filter, it will show up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, you can click on filter here with this will remove items matching a particular condition you can have an if node and you can have a switch node so the switch node is that if you have um, several criteria that you're defining then switch node is extremely useful because this will output several types of data based on the filtration function that you have given but let's say i want to use the if node so i'm going to click on the if node so now let's go back quickly just to see yep so now it's connected so now the if node spits out two outputs it's gonna spit out output or the data that's gonna be coming out of this node as either true or false so if the condition is being met for true it will spit out all of the data from this area and if it's not meeting it it's gonna send that data to the false node so let's go ahead and double click on this so now let's go ahead and say hey if this data that's coming in from my previous node, right, has a particular value, then I want to be able to output that. But if it doesn't, then I don't want that data to be shown in my um, output from this particular node. So for example, as you can see the country here um, for this particular um, data point, it doesn't exist. So now I want to say, you know what? I don't want that data to come in here or I don't want any fields that doesn't have a country uh, to be able to be outputted in my note. So the way I can do that is the condition, as you can see, you have value one, value two, and whatever the condition you define in the middle here. So now let's go ahead and um, say, you know what? I only want to be able to check the data that exists. And if it does, send it to the true. And if it doesn't, send it to the false. So the way to do that is instead of equal to, because it's a comparison operation, you have several operations that you have uh, access to. You have the string operation. If it's a number, you do a number. Or if it's date and time, depending on what type of data time. But for, for us particularly, this country, because we want to filter through the country column here, this is a string. So I'm going to click on string. And you have all these operations that are available to you through this if node. But for us, let's say I'm going to say, hey, if this particular set of data exists, then output it. So therefore, I'm going to click on exists. And as soon as you do that, this is going to now um, say, hey, OK, the data that's required for this particular action is needs to be inputted here. So for the value now, I'm going to go to my schema view. Let me pull this out here. Click on schema. So now I'm going to grab the country. And now I'm going to say same thing again. As soon as you grab these items, it's going to show you, um, you know, the different suggested uh, operations or functions that you can utilize within the JavaScript code uh, to be able to manipulate this further. But for now, we're fine with that. So the output, as you can see, the result, it says US. So now I'm going to say if the country exists, output this in data. So let's go ahead and actually test that step. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and click on the table view here on the input and we can take a look at this. All right. So from here, I have one, two, three, four, five. I had five items that were coming in. Now we filtered it. We said that if the country doesn't exist, output this data. And as you can see, now we have four items because this item, this Zafat Beeble Brox, it doesn't have country. Therefore, it did not output that. So now if we get out of this, now you can see that there was data that came in and it's kind of hard to see, but there's data that came in from true and then also the data that came in from false. So if I just add something else to that, we don't have to add anything to it. I'm just going to quickly show you that this will further show and I can move this around here. And let's go ahead and add one more. Move this around here. So now you have these conditions uh, that are being split. This data is being split. 
So now let's go ahead and test this step again. If I click on play, now you can see that five items came from this node, five items came from this node, and now you have four items that went to our true statement or our true route and one item that went to our false route. So this is how you can manipulate and test um, or change the data that's coming in based on these um, different nodes that come in. And now I can do something with the data that's coming out from this node right here. I can add further um, nodes to it to be able to change it. And same thing with here, this will be completely separate, right? Because now I can do different things with the data that's coming in from the output of this particular node, okay? All right, well, hopefully that gave you kind of a further understanding of how these nodes work and how you can manipulate the data based on the different uh, filters you want to apply or the different nodes that you can add to these things uh, that you can further manipulate and change. All right, so that's good for now. We'll have had a good understanding of how all these things fit together. Then you can go ahead and start on building your workflows and your uh, AI agents and complex uh, AI agents and workflow journey.